Calixtine Laredo Robinson Trio's partnership has lasted longer than most marriages. How has the trio managed to stay together and achieve success for 36 years? Well, according to cellist Sharon Robinson, the answer is threefold. Respect for one another, a strong work ethic, and of course, a healthy sense of humor. Previews writer Jennifer Pensick speaks with Robinson about her longtime musical partners. The cellist recalls how a last-minute cancellation led to the trio's creation. Robinson also discusses the Andre Previn work co-commissioned by the Center for the Performing Arts and the rest of the trio's Penn State program. The trio has been together, I I believe it's 35 years. Yeah, that'll be our 36th season, right, you know, in September. I think we're so, so lucky. It's partly, I think, because we have, we don't do the trio 100% of the time, and we each go off and do our own uh, solo work, recitals, concertos, Jamie conducts. Um, So it's not, you know, oh, you know, every day, all day trio. And it helps to have a sense of humor and, uh, you know, not, take things so personally in a, in a, any kind of chamber music you have to be very very critical as you work and you know you know this doesn't sound good and why are you doing a, a shift there and uh, your rhythm's not good here and you know you hear it's like being with a severe critic all the time now how did you all first come um, together as a, as a trio there was actually a cancellation by the wonderful uh, pianist Rudolf Frekushny, and it was a last-minute thing. We were playing Dvorak Quartet and Dvorak Quintet, um, both piano works, piano quintet and piano quartet, at the Y in New York, and um, he found out just a little bit before that he had been double-booked by his management and couldn't play our concert, and we last-minute asked uh, Joseph Kallerstein, Jamie and I, and it, it this was this was wonderful. Just we all clicked, and uh, that was actually in '75, uh, the year before we got together. That summer, after all that, um, we asked him if he he might you know want to try doing trios on you know, on an ongoing group, and he called us the next day and he said, "Let's give it a try." And we've been just lucky that it's clicked and worked, and um, very very fortunate, I think. And the repertoire is so great. It's it's such it's so rich and so varied. And um, for instance, the program we're playing for you guys, we're starting out with a little bait of an opus posthumous, which is just one movement. It's short and sweet, and it's kind of like an amuse bouche before a great uh, a great dinner. Then we're doing two works that were written for us: one in the '80s, one in, in the just last year, the Previn, and then Brahms Opus Eight, which is one of the greatest trios ever written incredible trio that he wrote when he was a young man and then came back as an as an older person and revised it so it's got elements of Brahms as a young young buck and then Brahms the old sage so it's just a great great piece and and it's a great program and we're doing a master class there too I understand at Penn State well how important are the uh, master classes to you do you find that that's a good way to kind of reach you know, a new audience or younger people, absolutely. And and at a at a great school like Penn State, I mean, there are there is a wonderful music school and you know great players that can really appreciate the subtleties of great chamber music. And it's not just like you know the basics. It's very you can get in real depth with with some you know, wonderful performers there. Sometimes master classes can be I don't know uh, kind of scary for the student. And I know it was it was scary as for me as as a young student, but I think if people can just look at it as, as a chance to just play for your colleagues and and grow and get some differing ideas, you know, um, I I, uh, I I always enjoy it, and I think if the students can get over the fear of uh, failure, <laughs> which inevitably happens, you know, when when you're playing as a young student, you. Just, it's trial and error a lot of this stuff and the more experience you get in playing in front of people and and uh and just uh you know putting your heart right on your sleeve the the easier it becomes and and so hopefully it will be a good experience for everybody and you know just just going back to the um specific program i know that the previn piece is the one that was co-commissioned by the center for the performing arts yes we are so so grateful for that are there certain things that you seem to enjoy best about these pieces or that kind of draws you to these pieces? Because I know you mentioned how you guys get to do a pretty um, exciting repertoire. When you commission a piece, you have no idea what you're going to get. You really don't. I mean, 
Trevin is is an older artist, and you know you can take a look at some of his most recent works and see what his language is like now. But basically, you really don't know what what they have in, in their head. Um, but it, this piece turned out to be just sparkling and beautiful, beautiful, communicative uh, playing. He had heard our, our trio uh, earlier before he wrote the piece, and he also worked uh, both with Jamie and Joseph uh, in concertos um, earlier and, uh, you know, knew our playing and, and knew that we're quite communicative and melody-drawn persons, uh, players. And I think he made a piece, made a work that really communicates with audiences, which is really what we care about so much, that an audience can can understand it, even the first time through. And it, uh, this piece has a lot of tunes. You'll go out whistling, and um, there's a lot of nice cello writing, and, and something for everybody in this. I think it's it's quite a stunningly beautiful work. We've only played it once now, bef- before now. Um, I think you might be the second performance or the third. Um, but there was a, a group of 12 co-commissioners, so uh, we do get to play at all those places. But we, we just did the New York premiere in May. And so it's it's a relatively very near new work for us. And it's it still has a lot of sparkle for us and a lot of intrigue, actually. So, we, you know, we're still getting to know it, you know, and making it our own. It's not just Previn's work now. It's also our own, something we have to really own and and present as, as a convincing uh, musical entity. So it's 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 interesting, the, the life that a, a new piece will go through. Tickets are on sale for the Calixtine Laredo Robinson Trio Concert, October 3rd, 2012, at Penn State's Schwab Auditorium. Order online at www.cpa.psu.edu or by phone at 1-800-ARTS-TIX.